Hey everyone, it's Jeff, and welcome to the first episode of my new show. I am really excited about this, and um, I hope you like the new logo and everything. I will get into more of the details by the end of this episode, but I do want to talk about the NBA first. So if you want more details, um, just stick around until the end. This episode is only going to be like 10 minutes long, right? So at least hopefully. Yeah, um, I'll get into it right now though. Um, so best player in NBA, right? This is a topic or a competition that's been probably the most wide open it's been for um, a while. And realistically, I only have two players in my mind here when I think about best player in NBA, right? But I actually have six guys that I want to talk about here because I think there are six names here that are particularly relevant. And those are the six players I'm going to focus on. Um, first off, I don't think it actually matters who the best player in the NBA is or the world is, whatever. I think it's definitely fun to talk about, but it doesn't matter. And pretending like it does is just kind of like a way to simplify things. And it's, when I say that, it's like, it's easier to say, oh, this team won because they have LeBron James instead of like Kevin Durant or whatever. When in reality, you know, versus, okay, maybe they had a better game plan on defense, right? Or maybe, hey, they made this key rotation in um, substitution in this quarter, right? And that's what actually changed the flow of the game. It's a lot easier for them to just kind of boil it down to, you know, LeBron versus KD. And that's what most sports shows talk about. And I totally understand that because that's definitely more exciting for the average fan. And I totally get that. But personally, I've just, for the last few years, I haven't really cared about this because championships are never really determined by the best player in the world. Um, if you just look back at NBA history, right, just ask yourself how many times has a team actually won because they had the best player in the world, right? How many times has it been because of that versus, you know, the team around him was just incredibly awesome? And of course, there's instances like where you can argue that like maybe 2009 and 2010 recently, at least just like off the top of my head, perhaps with Kobe with, um, you know, Kobe and Pau Gasol, that was a nice duo, of course. But like, you know, the other guys around them, Trevor Reza, Meta World Peace, I'm kind of like losing track. Although Meta was only there for like one season. I think Trevor Reza was only there for one season as well, but... Everyone around them was, like, decent, of course. Obviously still good enough to make a championship run, but it wasn't, like, you know, a super team, of course. There are certain instances where that kind of does matter. But most of the time, like, the immense, you know, vast majority of the time, you win because your number two option is better than their number two option, right? Your number three option is better than their third best player. Or perhaps your coach is just better and he's able to come up with a better game plan, better plan of attack for the team. And there's just a lot of variables that go into this besides having, okay, we have the best player in the world, right? Or we have like the best, I think best player in a series actually matters a ton. I'm just speaking strictly when you get to like a top, like, you know, five, six guys, I just actually do not think it matters. And the proof is LeBron James pretty much losing every single year between 2014 and 2018, except for one season. And you can point to, oh, you know, 2012 and 2013, he did win the championship, of course. But like I said, he had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, right? That's a hell of a supporting cast. Maybe not so much in 2012, of course, but 2013. And my point is just the Miami Heat didn't win because LeBron James is the best player in the world. That definitely helped, of course, but they won because they also had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh backing him up, right? And people, they, they often forget that because, you know, basketball is that rare team sport where I would say between basketball versus, like, you know, soccer or football, American football at least, or baseball one player can leave an impact on the game like in no other sport. In baseball, you can have the best pitcher in the world, but it doesn't really matter sometimes that the rest of your team is, um, you know, kind of trash, right? In football, there's defense, there's so many variables, like wide receiver, whatever. But in basketball, it's just a bucket is a bucket, right? So because it is the sport where one player can impact the game the most, I think people do tend to forget that the supporting cast, however, is still like pretty much... 99% of the time, the determining factor when you get into a tough playoff series like this. You don't win a championship because you had Kevin Durant over Nikola Jokic, or, you know, Giannis over Steph Curry. And of course, that's a brief preview into the six guys I want to talk about. And in my eyes, here are the six players who I trust to wholeheartedly win a championship for me. And two of these players, they actually haven't won one yet, but they're monsters in the postseason. And I'm like 99.9% .9 confident that with a contending level roster right now, they could win a chip championship right now as well. So now that my whole, you know, rant about why I think best player doesn't really matter when you get to a certain threshold, here's my opinion on the actual topic that um doesn't matter, I guess, in my point of view. First guy on my list right here, Luka Doncic. He's awesome. He's averaged 33 points per game, 10 rebounds, 8.5 assists in his last 24 games. The Mavericks are killing it. They're on a win streak. 
by the way, I was completely wrong about the Chris Stapps Porzingis trade. I want to put that out there. I totally... Spencer Dinwiddie, he was really bad for the Wizards, and I just... I didn't expect him to be this good for the Mavericks. And I know a lot of other people um, also didn't expect that, but because I was so, like, staunchly against this trade, like, I have to come out and be like, okay, yeah, that was my bad on my part, right? I was definitely too... I was too quick to jump the gun on that. And, you know, I apologize for that because I was definitely too harsh. So, yeah, totally wrong about that. Spencer Dinwiddie, he's been killing it for the Mavericks. Um, yeah, Luka Doncic, though, he's like their entire offense, of course. And, like, Jalen Brunson, he helps. Maxi Kleba, he's awesome on defense as well. Maxi Kleba actually might be the most underrated player in the league right now. He's pretty good. Like, I think people don't consider him a great defender a lot of times because the Mavs defense overall isn't, like, amazing. And to be honest, like, Kleba... Doesn't really look like an elite defender, but he's been amazing. Um, there was one game, I think, against the Celtics where he really sh- helped shut them down. It was, like, really recently. The game where, um, geez, I forgot. Was it Luka Doncic or Spencer Dinwiddie? One of them hit, like, a really clutch three-pointer. And I think Jason Tatum fouled Luka on, like, the next shot. And the Mavericks got, like, three free throws. But, yeah, Maxi Kleba, though, he put together, like, these, like, three straight possessions where he was just incredible. Absolutely, like, kind of single-handedly shut down Boston in those three possessions. But, uh... Yeah, but Luca's still back on topic, actually. I should probably stop talking about the Mavs supporting cast so much. Um, even though, hey, like I said before, I think supporting cast matters the most. Luca, however, is without question the engine of that offense. He's the team, right? And he was arguably the best player in both the Clippers series he played against uh, you know, the last two years. And he's definitely not afraid of the limelight. And I feel like criticizing his lack of playoff success is just really incredibly stupid because... He's balled out both times he's been there. I don't know what else you want from him, right? The Clippers clearly had a better team. And so expecting him to beat them is just kind of unfair. And, well, I don't think expecting him to beat them is necessarily unfair, but criticizing him for not beating them when he played so damn well is just really freaking stupid to me because his, you know, supporting cast just was not as good as the Clippers, right? He didn't have the players they had. Um, Yeah, he's definitely not as good as Giannis, in my opinion, of course. But again... That doesn't matter to me because I feel like the difference between them is so small that compared to what matters much more is the players around them. That's significantly more important, right? So like if I had Luka instead of Giannis, I'm not stressing about that, of course, right? Like I don't think there's a really, that's not really a downgrade to me at all. Next up, Nikola Jokic. He's posting the best single season PER of all time this year, which is just absolutely crazy. He's leading the NBA in box plus minus, offensive box plus minus, uh, value over replacement player. He's my MVP this year. And I think that if you looked at other advanced stats, which I'm actually like, I kind of hate advanced stats, not because I think that advanced stats aren't useful. It's just, that's a whole other argument. I just, I don't like advanced stats, guys. But I still think it's incredible just how Nikola Jokic has been dominant in terms of the leaderboards in advanced stats this year, right? The Nuggets, they're down Jamal Murray. They've lost Michael Porter Jr. And somehow they're still like in the postseason. And it's mainly because of Nikola Jokic, of course. Um, and some people say he's not an elite scorer. That's just complete bullcrap to me because like one, he's averaging like 26 points per game, guys. But also, he just likes to pass the ball, right? He's a facilitator. And he can score at an elite level when he needs to. And every single time the Nuggets need him to do that, he's stood up, right? And it's not a sexy as Kevin Durant shooting over like four guys from like 18 feet out, right? Or, you know, Steph Curry shooting a 30-footer. But a 5-foot flip shot is a bucket still, either way, right? And maybe Jokic, the way he scores, just... It's not as nice-looking as, you know, Steph or KD or LeBron or Luka or whatever sometimes. Or even guys like Zach Levine, Devin Booker. You know what I'm talking about, right? But if it works, it works. And he can score from pretty much anywhere in the court. There's pretty much nothing on offense that Nikola Jokic can't do. And, geez, like his passing, man... I think you can definitely argue him. Nikola Jokic might be a top 10 player offensively all time already. And of course, I know, I know, he doesn't have the championships or whatever. It's just, that's just kind of my gut personal feeling, just watching him play, like, holy moly. Um, But yeah, anyways, Jokic, though, he's definitely in this category for me. If you gave him, like, you know, solid players around him, if you gave Jokic, like, Chris Milton, Drew Holiday, right, the Nuggets, they're definitely, without question, championship heavyweights, right? Um, I'm not saying that, like, you know, Giannis is only winning because of those guys, like, that's just an example. Next up, though, Steph Curry. Um, and he's always kind of weird. He's hurt right now. And without Draymond Green, like, he's elite, but he's not really best in the world, right? And we, see that, we saw that over the last few games where he kind of have a cold stretch. And I'm not saying he had a cold stretch just because of Draymond Green, but you can kind of see how without a ball handler who's that good of a passer like Draymond to kind of facilitate the Warriors' offense, 
of the Golden State, they weren't really getting the best out of Steph moving off ball, right? But with Draymond, he's like an absolute supernova, super complete superstar, right? And it's Steph Curry, guys. I feel like there's really nothing else I can say. He's always going to be in contention for best play in the world as long as he's, you know, in his prime, of course. Next up, I have LeBron James leading the NBA in scoring at age 37. And the way he's still able to kind of just shoulder an offense as both their primary passer and scorer, and, you know, his shooting has really improved, it's just incredible still. And you can definitely criticize him as a leader for sure. Body language has been really awful sometimes defensively. I think the Lakers' defense, they've really struggled sometimes, and it doesn't help with LeBron James. It's exactly, you know, going all out on that end, although the fact that he's carrying so hard on offense, it's... Uh, he's still got it basketball-wise, right? You can definitely criticize him in terms of, like, locker room chemistry rise right now, but it's just basketball-wise, yeah, he still got it. Next up, though, Kevin Durant versus Giannis. Um, and like I said before, I only had two players in my actual, like, best player in the world conversation, I guess, and it's obviously these two, right? Last two players I'm mentioning. Uh, so KD, most versatile scorer in the league, hands down. Definition of a three-level scorer who can score pretty much literally every single way imaginable, right? Averaging 29 points per game this season, on some, as usual, pretty nuts shooting percentages. I think it's like 51% from the field, 37% from three, you know, 90% from the free throw line, like usual KD stuff. And he's really evolved as a passer over his career. And yeah, he's just, he's definitely a complete package on offense. Um, the Nets, they're 28 and 15 this year with him playing. And I have Giannis over KD for pretty much two reasons. Their first is availability, which unfortunately, availability, it matters, right? And it's totally not fair because it's not KD's fault he's getting hurt, but that's just how it is. Like He's only played 43 out of 70 games this season, 35 out of 72 last year, and it just, you know, it sucks to say it because it's not really something that Kevin Durant can control because, um, well, I guess you can do some things, but obviously it comes down to just kind of sheer luck sometimes and just his body, right? And that's not really his fault, but it's just something you always have to take into account here. Next up is defense. Giannis is by far the best defender here in this entire list, right? Out of like Luka, Jokic, those guys, right? While also being pretty much equally as good on offense. And he definitely has more offensive flaws compared to KD, Steph, LeBron. Like those guys, you can't really pinpoint like offensive weaknesses. Like, yeah, you know, LeBron, free throws, kind of icky sometimes. Same with Luka, actually. Um, you know, maybe Jokic. Although, to be honest, I, I don't think you can really criticize Jokic on offense right now. He's just incredible. With Jokic, it's pretty much defense, right? That's the biggest thing people point at. With KD, it's like, yeah, sometimes when he's like not making shots, um, it's like kind of ticky-tacky things. But with Giannis, of course, he can't shoot. But, uh, you know, his strengths are just so damn dominant, it doesn't really matter, right? And as Bruce Lee once said, he fears the man who's, was it Bruce Lee? I might be messing this quote up, man. Um, but he said, like, one of those, like, martial arts people, people geez, uh, I can't talk now, apparently. Um, one of them said that he fears the man who's kicked, practiced the kick a thousand times. Jeez, okay, let me restart. He fears the man who's practiced one kick a thousand times more than the man who's practiced a thousand kicks one time, right? And, of course, Giannis, his one kick is... <laughs> Sorry, okay, okay. I need to control myself, okay. And of course, Giannis, his one kick is being probably the best interior scorer in the NBA right now. Like, yeah, his post game, it's not as good as Joel Embiid's or Nicole Jokic's, right? But he still gets buckets down here because he's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster, he can jump higher, and if it works, it works. And he gets 30 points a game pretty much doing that. And by the way, he's also shooting like 75% from the free throw line the last 24 games. And he's had some really, you know, incredible games where he shot like 18 for 18 or like 18 for 20, which was like, holy crap, that's like elite free throw shooting, of course. And of course, there's that finals game where he went, um, he didn't miss a single shot, right? Uh, and so that free throws might actually not be a huge problem for Giannis anymore. And if that's the case, then holy moly, um, he's going to be incredible. So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on the best player in the world right now. As I mentioned, I do think it's Giannis with KD behind him. But again, I don't think it matters whether or not you have Giannis versus having Jokic or Luka. I think at that point, you have a player who you're really confident in, can lead you to a championship. And at that point, it's about putting players around him. Now, of course, there are some notable players that I left off this list, right? For example, Joel Embiid. He's been playing really amazing this season. And man, um, I really do need to talk about Joel Embiid on like my page or my show or whatever. 
I'll do that some other day because I'm definitely running out of time here. Anyways, though, let me just talk about the actual format of the show real quick. So you'll notice, unlike most podcasts, which are like an hour long, this one's only like 15 minutes, right? And I'm doing this because I don't think I have like the time to really come up with an hour long episode every single week. And even like by then, it's just some news would just be kind of stale. And it just, it takes a really long effort and time for me to do that, guys. I'm, I'm a college student, of course. Um, it's, I, I don't have that in me. I'm sorry. But like with these shorter episodes, right? This took me what? 15 minutes to record. Probably took me like 10, 15 minutes to kind of write my notes out for this, right? So it's really short, really simple, easy. I can record, get one of these out and like within an hour, right? And I have an hour every single week without question. So uh, my goal is just, Hopefully I can do this twice a week, although I'll be honest, that is kind of ambitious for me because, um, yeah, but my goal is, I think, realistically, once a week, and I'll just pick a topic that I find particularly interesting. Right now, of course, I'm doing best player in the world. I definitely do want to spend some of these episodes on um, uh, draft prospects, right, like Chad Holmgren, Jabari Smith. I've been watching a lot of college basketball recently, so I really want to talk about that. And if you're listening on YouTube, um, I'm sorry, I just... I don't have the energy to actually record an episode with like video and face cam, whatever. I know a lot of you guys think it's not that much more energy or resources, but it is. And I, this is a hobby of mine, guys. I'm not trying to make money or whatever from this. So I hope you enjoy either way, though, because I did enjoy recording this. Yeah, um, I'll see you guys uh, for the next one.